And now we have breaking news. Breaking Welcome news. To today. Welcome to today's special episode. Uh, we are coming to you live from uh, across the nation with exciting news and updates and wanted to create a special episode for your Friday morning um, and uh, kind of discuss some of the exciting developments that have uh, come about as of yesterday. Uh, but before we do that, um, if you are new to our uh, channel and to our stream, uh, feel free to like and subscribe um, to our uh, channel for all the EV news weekly. Uh, we talk about exciting topics and uh, up and coming things that are happening in the EV space, both on the ground, air and sea. So uh, now we will get to our topic of the day. Chris, you are yeah. what I would consider to be a Ford advocate, to say the least. Um, and, you know, you are in the special inner circle of uh, 40s that got an exclusive opportunity. And I am now a part of the party uh, as of like maybe 45 days from now. Uh, but tell us what happened and um, what your experience has been so far. Yeah, it was really exciting. Ford is does a great job with uh, including some of their customers and their, there's a group of early access folks and I'm lucky enough to be in, in that group. And they gave us a, a call and an email and uh, kind of told us, hey, the, the Tesla superchargers are going to open. And then we all agreed to be under on embargo until uh, you know yesterday at eight o'clock Eastern time, uh, which was 5 a.m. out here where I am in California. And you were, uh, up, could, you were up early this morning, <laughs> early, early. Yeah. I was up at uh, four 30 in the morning and um, yeah, for the, for the launch of the access to the Tesla supercharger network. And it was exciting because, you know, we knew it was happening and they had uh, locations picked out for us to go and meet with a, a Ford engineer uh, or a Ford communications person. And so there were people around the country, uh, you know, uh, Kyle Connor and, and out of spec had one out in New Jersey and uh, Jake from the communications team was out there. And uh, some people from the lightning club out there uh, were, were out as well. Uh, Jace, who we've had on the show, uh, he was one of the early access people, uh, Will from F the pump that we had on. Yeah. Just for the record, I'm going to call him out. I texted yeah. him and asked him to join this and he's currently at the casino. So, oh, I mean, nice. Jace, now that you're listening, I'm just letting you know I'm calling you out on the spot. Thanks for being busy and not being able to give us your feedback. But keep continue on, Chris. Hopefully, hopefully he's winning, right? But uh, yeah, a lot, <laughs> a lot of people that we've had on the podcast were were part of this group, and so uh, Will uh, was down in Southern California. Um, Liv and Patrick from Maki Vlog, they were down there, and so they they got to be with Ford in Southern California. Up here in Northern California, it was uh, Sergio Lifgif who uh, we've had on the show as well. Um, and he's really the one that kind of got me into this inner circle, to be honest with you. We've, kind had, of, uh, we've had pretty much the entire inner circle uh, yeah. Ford on this podcast so far. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, Ford, think, all that's left is we need like Jim Farley on the podcast and then we'll be fulfilled. So we do. We need to get him on here, right? Um, ben, who we've had on this show from Colorado, he, he uh, also was included in the adapter. So we um, there's a group. I, I, I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to say somewhere in the area of, you know, 20 folks. Um, and then media had their own separate group uh, that media got some early access uh, as, as well, like car and driver and those kind of people. And and so, yeah, it um, basically at different spots around the country. We met folks at Ford and we started plugging in and testing and seeing how it was going and, um, you know, being able to take pictures and kind of talk about it. Now, uh, for me, I was a little jealous because I had to wait till nine in the morning Pacific time. And in my head, I'm like, man, nine in the morning, that's uh, that, that's already like midday after lunch in the East Coast. And I didn't want to wait that long. So I went and did some like photo shots down at literally at the Tesla factory. I, I went down to the Tesla factory and just got some pictures of it. And that way, right at five in the morning when the embargo was lifted, I was able to share at least the news and some cool pictures. Um, and, and so that's kind of how I started the day. And and then there was, even though I've got, and, and the group got these prototype adapters, which are, you know, um, they're not uh, they're not that far away from production adapters, but they are prototypes, so we have to give them back. So it, um, again, five in the morning, I'm on the, the, the Ford website, making sure I reserve my adapter because I've got to swap it out. So I wanted to make sure I was, in, but again, that means getting getting up early, right? Because um, when I did it, I was like number 366 in the order number. And, and it says it's going to ship it to me by April. Um, but I've seen people- I was 377, so I was right behind you. <laughs> right behind, yeah. And so you, you guys on the East Coast, of course, you know, it makes a lot of sense. You're able to pop on and get that. 
Uh, but then there's people on the West that were just waking up to this news and seeing the post. And uh, honestly, is... I'm grateful because y'all Californians get everything special before us. And yeah. in this instance, I will get my adapter before a lot of Californians, uh, an East Tennessee boy will be able to actually use the network uh, in a meaningful way. And I appreciate that. So thank you for yeah, there is a lot of business in California, so California does get a lot of, of stuff early. And yeah, in this case, you guys on the East got a little bit of that perk there. So, But that's, again, why I wanted to post something, even though I wasn't going to meet with the Ford folks till 9 o'clock. I wanted people that were waking up first thing in the morning, having their coffee at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. I wanted them to see the link and be able to click on it. And um, and and then I can see that, you know, o over 40 people clicked on the link that I provided, and that was just, you know – fulfilling to see that right to help people get that because it is not an intuitive process if, if it, you're just figuring it all out i mean i've had the briefing with ford i understood it ahead of time and so it made it easy for me so anything i can do to help guide people is you know kind of what i'm hoping to do and that's the whole point of the podcast is to make it approachable and accessible and so that was what i, was and I will say if you've if you're listening to this on this friday morning or whenever you're listening to this uh go to either the ford app or go online to your account, go to connected services under the account settings yeah. of your Ford profile, and that will be your ability to reserve it. If you haven't yet, you'll need to do that to get your free adapter. Um, and uh, by doing that, you're probably gonna be queued out till summertime based on their projections from what I was seeing. Um, yep. The last ones that were posted this afternoon look like maybe June, July yep. uh, was the estimated. Now, I mean, I've been hoping that they're gonna increase that time frame up because I mean, I'm number 350 or ish, 375, and they yeah. already have me like 45 days out. And I mean, you know, may maybe that the production's really that slow, or maybe they're just trying to buy themselves time. We'll see and report on it, obviously, when we get it, because I am incredibly excited to have the adapter. Um, yeah. One of the things, obviously, in California, you've experienced your network, but you have chargers everywhere. Um, we do. Uh, we've, dis we've discussed this. Our network is horrible here. Um, my nearest charger to me and uh, my uh, residence is about 45 minutes away, um, supercharger wise. Um, yeah. And I only charge at home, so it's not a big deal. But, you know, for instance, I went on a business meeting to West Virginia this week, and the, there was not a single fast charger in the entire state of uh, West Virginia. Now, there is a couple Tesla chargers, but there is yeah. no um actual fast chargers for um any any provider so electrify america had one in whitville outside in virginia that we had to stop at and charge my truck up at and we had to make it all the way in the hyundai dealership in uh, south charleston west virginia had a 60 kilowatt unit that i had to stop wow. drop my truck off for two hours while it wow. charged uh go, go went and got lunch with somebody came back and then managed to have enough juice to get back to that charger outside of west virginia um but that's something that this charger is a game changer for us because, you know, for instance, um, on Monday, I also had took a business, I had a trip to Knoxville and I went, and that's about two and a half hours away, but I can't quite make it there and back on one charge. Well, on the way back, um, I, I wanted to stop at Bucky's. So I stopped at Bucky's. Bucky's has the upgraded Tesla stations that I could have plugged into, but I couldn't. I had no to adapter. Go, to, go to Bucky's and then I yeah. went across the highway on the same exit across the highway to a Harley Davidson dealership and wow. I had to plug into EA for 10 minutes, but I could have avoided that had I had the charger plugged in. I was in Bucky's for half an hour with my wife and that's something that I, I could have avoided all of that um, with the adapter. So it's a really exciting thing for us because on the way to our Nashville trip that we have to take frequently, that is something that will have three or four uh, Tesla networks in really good locations for us. So it opens up the network a ton for us. Obviously a, another disclaimer is that this, um, only works with the v3 and beyond charging correct or is it v4 and beyond yeah it's uh so it's v v3 and v4 and yeah kind of the the order of operations really is that starting today um ford is going to push a priority over the air update to the trucks um and it's important that it's a priority because one of the things we've we've learned with ford if you've bought like a two, 2023 truck for example it's not like an iphone where you just turn it on and hit update and all the latest greatest updates push to you they get pushed in a certain order and over a certain yeah. period of time yeah. and, and and so this will be different this will be marked as a priority update this will come over the year i've already gotten mine i've already gotten yeah. mine on my truck yeah 
So people want to make sure that they're they've got those settings checked out, that they get them uh, five you know, seven days a week, and and that's really primarily I think in the vehicle for the plug and share communication with Tesla. Um, yeah. If if you're a driver and you're going to use this network, if you don't know, um, I saw a couple of people ask the question in the Ford Lightning group today. But um, you you have the option to either do the uh, plug and play like they have with the EA stations and that network, the Blue Oval network. Um, but you don't get the discounts like you get with an EA membership. So for me and my charging experience with how much I supercharge, I don't use plug and play because you can't get the discounts. I think something Ford should do is allow you to link your Electrify America and your Tesla account to it to get the discounts and the plug and play because that would just make life more convenient. However, for me, I choose to use the Electrify America and I will be using the Tesla app with the subscriptions that you pay to get yeah. the discounts on power. Because with Electrify America, in half of a charging session, I pay that monthly fee. Um, sure. And when, and when it comes to Tesla, I mean, it's about double the expense, but I'm sure with the amount that I'll use it in one charging session, I'll make that money back. So I'm not overly um, – it's something that if you intend to get the discounts on the kilowatt hours that they have in the monthly subscription because you are a frequent driver, uh, you'll need to set up a Tesla account and uh, subscribe through that. And use that to initiate your charges when you plug in, which is not a big deal for me. I do it every time. Uh, just something that you have to learn process wise. Yeah, it, it's very similar in, in that situation with EA, and and hopefully one day they can figure that out. I don't know the technology behind um, why that is that they can't get those discounts to apply when they're doing the plug in charge. But um, this is kind of the order that it went for me was first that over the air update to the truck, which is more than just the plug in charge. It's also going to update what's called Charge Assist which is the app, and they're starting to change that name, by the way. it's You're going to hear it called Charge Assist or Public Charging App. Um, both of those things are in there, and just giving the truck the ability to communicate with the Tesla network. So if that OTA hasn't come yet, um, it, it won't communicate with the network. It's got to come over. Um, so there, there's things in there uh, from the communications protocol thing. That yeah, is you'll beyond. need it. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And then and to your point, the... Um, the next thing that people want to do is to update their Ford Pass app because the Ford Pass app needs to be updated. And it's going to also have um, right there on the home screen, there's a button that says View Chargers. And once you've updated your Ford Pass app, you go to View Chargers and the Tesla network is now included. You can filter for it. There'll be a little indication, by the way, on the charge assist. There'll be a symbol that'll say that there's an adapter needed. Um, and there's filters if you don't have your adapter yet to to make sure that all that stuff is filtered out. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the Tesla app, you're going to want to update the Tesla app. If you don't already have one, you know, get an account, get the latest and greatest Tesla app, because then that will now, and I've got uh, on X Twitter, uh, at Bo Family, you can see a video that I've posted. Uh, I think I did in the Facebook group as well um, for the Lightning Owners group. Uh, there's a video that shows you like how you set it up. Once you've downloaded the latest Tesla app, you can tell it what kind of vehicle you have, what year it is. Um, all and what of that we will kind do, of... Chris, if you're okay with it, what we will do is yeah. we'll take that video and we'll make it a short on our YouTube channel. Um, awesome. Just so that way our viewers I can have that straight on the, the um, YouTube channel. So if you're interested, I will put it in the YouTube channel. So just feel free to uh, access that or check out Chris's socials. But for convenience, if you're already on the channel, just go to our shorts and it'll be available there. And you can see in there when you do that, it's got all the manufacturers listed. It's got Rivian. It's got all the different Kia, right? So you can tell it's coming. You can tell this is just the tip of the iceberg for this. Um, and, and today... Then and today, Rivian announced that in March, their drivers will be able to use the Nax network with an adapter. So I think awesome. that everybody, you're going to see this rollout with adapters come very quickly now. Yeah, I think they wanted to give Ford their day, right? Like Ford, um, you know, Ford's the one that was the first to sign up. That kind of started the avalanche of everybody else. And um, and I think they wanted to give them their own day and their early access, even if it's only a few weeks or, or a month ahead of the rest. And, you know, they did it on a, on a Thursday, on a leap year. How cool is that? Um and then yeah, it push. So you, you got these updates to the to the truck, to the Ford Pass app, to the to the Tesla app, and then to your point, right? The um the the discounts. So the the numbers aren't that far off, honestly, in California from what EA was charging. So just to give you an example, where I was today, which was Los Gatos in the South Bay, um, it cost me forty nine cents per kilowatt. Um, and, and that is not out of line with EA. I mean, EA is typically in the mid fifties. So even without a discount on the Tesla network, it was cheaper than what my local EA and EV yeah. goes were charging. Um, yeah. Now, comparison, though, if, if you were um, – now, I don't own a Tesla, but um, 
Sergio also has a Tesla like we talked before. And so he checked on his app what that same cost would have been. And if he as a Tesla owner, um, it was only uh it was only 36 cents. And so that's a big delta, right? Like you're only paying 36 cents. Now I don't know if the non-Tesla owner but Tesla subscriber, does it drop it all the way to that 36 cents? I think I, so. I think you know, so. I, I think it's that big of a deal because they want a bunch of 1299 subscribers. Yeah. Um, I think as a subscriber, I think that's the equal pricing across the board. I might be wrong. Um, and if you know that, please comment below. But I, I think yeah. that in that in that instance, that's something that um I think you get to share that price if you pay the twelve ninety nine a month. And I'm going to play around with some more chargers. So it may be worth it for me to go ahead and subscribe for one month and I'll be able to kind of get a better idea once I do. Um, I promise you the day I get the adapter, me and Jesse are going to a Tesla station and we'll have some videos that we can put up online and celebrate yeah. that moment. Yeah. And, and then said, the real. We've already said, Chris, we need you to come here. We want <laughs> yeah. Jesse and his cyber truck. We're going right. to have both the lightnings and we're going to have a big uh, posting of it. It'll be fun. That's nah, going to be a lot of fun, man. And yeah. And look, Tesla, if if it if it does mirror what the Tesla owner pricing it would be with a subscription, I mean, it's a phenomenal deal if you can wait till after 11 o'clock. Like at 11 o'clock, it drops all the way down to 23 cents. And, and I think that, I think the situational pricing is based in California specific. I don't think that's the so case. So it's different in other places? Wrong. Okay. I think it's that – I think Tesla you, has a di dynamic pricing network like EA based on what the power company is going to charge because your local power company probably charges – a dynamic rate based on the time of day. And I don't think that we do here. I think it's a flat rate. So I think we do nationally yeah, that use. might be, I think that might be a national uh, indifference, but something that nonetheless pay attention to your local provider um, because that's, that's pretty big savings for sure. Yeah. So like at nine in the morning when we were there, it was 36 cents. But then if you wait till noon, it's 50 cents. Then if you wait till the mid afternoon, it's like 37 cents and it stays that way all the way to 11 o'clock at night. 11 o'clock at night, it drops all the way to 23 cents, which is an amazing deal. You cannot find that anywhere. In, Take your um, honey out and watch your late night show at a yes. Tesla charging station to charge your yes. vehicle. That's cheaper it's, than you get at the house. So yeah. No, it's a, it's a great, it's yeah. funny. You no, know, I, it, it opened, I was like, Oh my God. Like if, like if I didn't have solar, it would literally be cheaper for me to go and yeah. plug in at 11 o'clock. And I, it's funny because yeah. um, I've seen people post uh, I've seen people post a bunch of folks waiting, waiting at a charger until 11 and at 11, all the people swoop in and plug in. And, and that's why. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Um, and then, yeah, so then once all, you know, I had all the updates and then after that, it was, there were two different ways, like you mentioned to, to get your adapter reserved. One of them was the website Ford.com slash fast charging adapter. Um, and then the other one was the Ford pass app under connected services, like you said. And, and yeah, at this point, it's already out to July. Now, hopefully it's a under promise over deliver situation and they ramp that up. It is, you know, as far as the adapter itself, right. Um, it, it is designed and engineered uh, and made by Tesla. Just, it is just like their Magic Doc, man. If you've seen a Magic Doc, it looks yeah. exactly like it. You can, which is encouraging. There's it's a well-designed. There's just some software in it that communicates with Ford, or is it just pure power devices it, in the actual device? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a dumb it's a dumb adapter. It just passes straight through. There are two um two temperature sensors inside of it to make sure that the temperature doesn't get out of whack. And if it does, it'll derate. And if necessary, it'll completely shut it off if something's my, going wrong. My question is, do you know if, let's say, a Rivian driver the second week of March gets access to the network, can they buy the Tesla? I mean, obviously, it's not out yet, but in theory, could they use that adapter on their yeah. truck since it's a CCS to NAX? So there's a big there's a big question there, right? Because um, and it's something that um, I, I'm I'd like to test out, and I'm sure somebody else is already trying to test this out. So if you go and you tell the app, if you go into the Tesla app and you tell the, the Tesla app that you have a Rivian, no chargers show up. But if you tell it you've got a Ford Lightning, then they then they do. So what if you go the and announcement say, I have... by Rivian today said the network will be open, I think mid March, and so maybe they're about to get that into their uh, software like like Ford did today in the trucks. Yeah, but maybe once... that's coming. But once it comes, maybe I don't know if you could use the same adapter yes, on a Rivian for sure. Ford. I'm guessing it's the same, right? Yep. Yeah. And there's three there's uh, that I know of so far. There's three adapters. Um, there's the one that um, Tesla is making and then distributing through Ford and likely um, will also distribute through Rivian. There's been leaks uh, on Rivian uh, platforms that show 
um, already. They've got the graphics, and it's the exact same adapter. So uh, probably GM is doing the same thing. You're going to have Ford, GM, and Rivian, I imagine, all using the Tesla adapter. Probably many more, more will as well. And um, any of them can be swapped for each other. They're all the same adapter. They're dumb. They're not addressable. There's not any way to identify them. And then the other one is um, we've talked before that I had the A to Z adapter that I tested. That one will also work perfectly fine. I can plug it in and charge on the Tesla network instead of using the Ford one. Um, I wanted yeah. to make today about Ford. So um, absolutely. I, yeah. I, I have and it's a, a free yeah. charger to all of us, which is huge. Right. right I mean, right. that sticker price is 200 and something dollars. It so, is. I mean, that's, yep. they didn't, they did not have to give that to all of their drivers, but I think it's a huge step forward for all of us. And I mean, it's a significant, significant yeah. um, opportunity for all of us to increase our network and really giving us all chargers doesn't improve their financials at all. It's just a good step for all the people who chose to invest eighty thousand dollars in yeah. a really nice truck from them. But you know that on their financial lineup, they could have just charged us all, and we would still have all have paid for it. But well, it's, I am it's a lot. incredibly grateful to Ford leadership for uh, giving to that all that, giving it all to us for free. So yeah, shout out Jim Farley for making that commitment and following through on it. You know, um, absolutely. Electron, Electron is the other one that's out there. So there's A to Z, Electron, and and Ford. And they all have different form factors, but they essentially do the same thing. Um, I can I can tell you that the Ford slash Tesla one, I think, is the most impressive of the bunch. It's the most compact. Um, it's the lightest. And it is designed really well. Um, and, and the way it basically functions, it's, again, just like that Magic Dock, it is going to plug. Uh, you're going to take the Tesla cable, the Nax cable, plug it into the adapter first. And it is a nice assertive click. Like it feels, it clicks into place. It's great. And then you're going to take that and you're going to plug it into your CCS port and it snaps right into place really well. And it's got a little lever on top and it's it's designed very safely. So one of the things, there's no external screws that anybody could take apart and get inside or do anything with. It's it's sealed, it's weatherproof, it's nice, it's, it's really sturdy. And then there is a clip uh, underneath that you is how you release the NACs from the adapter when you're done. Um, but that clip will not work as long as it's physically plugged into the truck. Like if you try to reach underneath and you try to unclip, unclip that and pull the NACs cable out, it won't let you do it. You have to take and remove from the, the truck or the Mach-E first. So when you're done charging, there's the little button, the unlock button that's blue and flashing when it's charging. You press that button, it will turn from blue to white. And now you know it's safe to unplug. You press the button right on the top, you pull the adapter out of your CCS port, and then you disconnect the NAX from the the front side of that adapter. And there's yeah. no, you can't do that until then. It won't let you. It's really well, well done. Um, the they way needed they to that. have that for safety because, I mean, people yeah. don't understand how many volts are flowing through their hand and how much amperage is coming through their hand when they hold that, yeah. that, that cord. But <clears> if, you, if, if that had any fault, you would die. So yeah, for it's sure. something that like, it's incredibly important with high voltage uh, systems. You're having 200 kilowatts delivered to your vehicle. That is an insane amount of that power. And people don't understand that. Uh, yeah. So it's something I appreciate the steps for safety because that's something that's going to be absolutely required, which is probably why it took so long to engineer it is you have to make sure that that connection is very secure, waterproof, because if there's any instances yeah. where that water gets connected to that juice, people die. So and, it's, and uh, yet, it's something that needs to be engineered properly. So it, And it's meant for, you can tell this thing is meant for multiple different vehicles and it, it's a thousand volts, 500 amps. Um, Ford says that it's rated at 300 amps continuous and then 500 amps uh, peak for 10 minutes. But I don't think that's the actual adapter. I think that's the Ford standard because Ford will pull for about 10 minutes the full boost of that 500 amps and then it will come down to 300 amps um, but the the charge adapter itself um i i my understanding is that it, it's a thousand volts 500 amps continuous even though ford tells you 300 amps continuous and 500 for 10 minutes um <clears throat> i think it's the same one that's going to be used for rivian and everybody else and it's it's designed well, and, to be 500 and a thousand yeah if it's 500 for the amperage the problem is the, the the lightning will only take 170 which is about 300 amps delivered um like yeah. you said, it's the Ford standard. I'm hoping that that adapter, when you lose, use larger vehicles, will have higher juice output because the Tesla charger is able to output 250 in most or 350 in some. Um, but that's yeah. something that in, in our instances, our trucks will only ever accept 170. So, I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's great. I hope to one day have a, a lightning or otherwise that can have <laughs> higher power delivered because that's the future of the industry. However, 
um, you know, for that purpose, 300 amps is about the best you're going to get. So, and I'll kind of tell you, I'll break down the curve of what I experienced. And of course, you know, your mileage will vary as they say, I mean, I've got the standard range, so it won't go up to the 170, 180 that the extended range will. Um, I wasn't able to precondition my battery, but I will say that I got similar results to the times that I've been to an EA station and have been able to. So I did have the drive to the supercharger was over an hour and a half. So uh, I think my battery was nice and warm when I got there. <clears throat> and then kind of the curve, when I when I plugged in that first 10 minutes, it was giving me 159 kilowatts. It was a good, strong uh, curve up there. And then in, in about 10 minutes later, which is the standard, it kind of drops down and settles in into that 120 to 130 kilowatt range. Um, and it did that all the way to 70%. Uh, and again, that's really typical of the lightning. Um, now, Sergio and his Mach-E, he was getting about 113 kilowatts. So not quite what the lightning pulls, but um, I think that's, again, kind of typical for the Maki. And again, um, you know, it's a cold morning and I don't think he had the ability to um, to precondition the battery and all that because the the navigation isn't updated yet. That's going to come later. The the sync navigation, third party navigation, um, all that's coming later. But importantly, the sync navigation, it's not updated yet. So you you can't tell it to go there. Um, but you that is where you would use the charge assist or the public charging app find it and do it that way that would be the yeah. way you'd have to do it for now so not many people and in the don't ford think... and the ford app already they've already displayed <clears> the, the ch chargers and you can tell your phone to go to that site through the phone but yeah. not through the truck yet right now yeah. yep so that's what people are going to be using the app yeah. or the charge assist yeah and then um and so yeah it, it held it all the way to to 70 percent, and then when it got to 70 um it was it was dropping then to about 90 kilowatts somewhere in that range um, and it held that until 80%, and then at 80%, it you know it starts to have itself, right? It goes down to 40 kilowatts, and then at 90%, it goes, uh, you know, uh, down fr from there. So, um, yeah, it, it took me from 23% to 80% was 30 minutes, um, and and so I didn't think that was bad at all. Again, keep in mind I've got the standard range, so if you've got the long range, it's going to take you more than 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a great curve, you know. And my um, charging curve will be a little higher, but I, the moment yeah. I get it, I'll report on the status. So we yeah, will, uh, we will uh, happily report on that when we uh, get that. I, I think from what I understand, they kind of end up being within about five or seven minutes of each other because what happens is that for that first ten minutes, um, I'm you know I'm pulling one one fifty nine, but you're pulling closer to one seventy. But you've got more battery, so you're going faster, right? But your battery's yeah. bigger, so we kind of end up almost in the same place. When oddly I've, enough, when I've when I've done the correct charge curve with an EA that charger that can actually just charge, I'm hitting 170 to 175, uh, up from 40 to basically 50 percent, and then it, it settles in all the way to basically 60 uh, percent. Um, it'll settle in at right around the one uh, upper, like right around 160, uh, 155 to 160, and then for me, it'll trickle down um, from 70 percent. Or sorry, sorry, from sixty percent to eighty percent, uh, it'll stay steady right around between one thirty and one fifty, um, and then it tanks obviously at eighty um, there. But I'm usually always staying above one thirty um, when I'm experiencing my charge curve, depending on so. But yeah, well, I mean that's that's the exciting news to uh, break today. Obviously, uh, wanted to kind of uh, share that when we can, um, and you know, it's a lot more information to come. I'm sure we'll talk about it on uh, next week episode episode as well. But wanted to get the blast out of what it is. And if you haven't gotten it, go reserve your charger. Um, any final notes to add, Chris? Yeah, I think the last thing is just to keep in mind, if you're one of these people that gets this adapter early, um, be aware, right? Because this adapter is currently rare, highly sought after, valuable, right? And it it is not going to stay locked in place. It is anybody can walk up, hit your button, unlock it, pull your adapter and walk away with it. So just, you know, word to the wise, be aware of your surroundings. Um, I will steal the first one I find if I don't have mine yet. So just letting <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that's important to note. And then I think like we've talked about on other episodes, right? The charging etiquette. If you're going in there into a Tesla supercharger, you want to understand the situation. And a lot of these version threes, um, you're going to want to try to find the charger on the far right uh, because you're going to have to park on an offset. And you want to, you don't want to be taking up two spots if you don't have to. So look for an opportunity to not do that. Um, and I will also point out this, that um, we were talking about access to it. So one of the unique things too, is that there are some charging locations that, and so it's not all version threes because there are some that are mixed. Some locations have um, some version twos and some version threes at the same place. Those, they don't, Tesla doesn't want anybody to get confused by that. So if there is a mix of version two and version three, 
uh, superchargers, that is not going to be available. It's got to be entirely version three or entirely version four. Um, and then the one that I was using today, and when I say version four, just for clarity, because I don't want like somebody to, you know, comment. Well, they can comment, comment all you like, actually. Um, but um, <laughs> for those that when I when we say version three, it is a version three uh, or version four. Sorry, terminal. The terminal is the longer yeah. cable. The ver but the cabinet itself and the power it produces is still the exact same as version three right so these lightnings these lightnings at tesla stations 100 percent need version four because it's a need very the, tight the squeeze terminals. trying yeah. to get a, a v3 i've seen a couple of v3s try to plug it and it's a tight squeeze but yeah and that and that's what i was lucky today the, the one that we went to in los gatos were all version four terminals with longer cables yeah. and sergino and i were both able to take spots and it was just one spot and then there's one where i was able and this is where the layout really matters because one spot that i was in when i tried to back up there's a picture of sergio trying to reach the cable and it wouldn't quite reach it was about a foot short of being able to reach but that was because i couldn't back um, in one stall, I couldn't back the truck up because there were bushes there. So the bed of the truck was going to hit the bushes before my back wheels would hit the curb. So those bushes being there wouldn't let me back all the way up. Um, in another instance, there was um, a bollard still in the way that my bed would have hit. Um, in another instance, there was another um, charger. The, the, the terminal was in the way and I would have hit that. But there was uh, two spots where I could back all the way up and I put a picture of that online and I could plug in on the driver's side, just like a Tesla driver would. So um, in one instance, I could pull forward nose in and, and that was going to be perfect for what I needed and only take up the correct spot. And then in another instance, I was able to back in and have it on the right side. So the, yeah. the version four ones definitely help look for those opportunities and, and be a responsible um, participant to the supercharger access stations because everybody's got to kind of be patient and and be accommodating with this stuff and i think if we start by being responsible ford owners and others that get these adapters i think we'll be better received when they see our effort and if we make every effort and just we're in the wrong stall because that's the way it's designed people will be more understanding if they saw us make the effort so make absolutely. the effort absolutely. yep absolutely yeah. and i think we're going to be uh building uh, a manual uh, for some charging etiquette coming up soon, but also we'll probably make yeah. a couple episodes and maybe a couple videos on it. Um, we are considering adding some additional content uh, outside of just podcasting to our uh, YouTube channel. So um, that's something that um, I think etiquette and uh, charging experiences and stuff like that is something that we will look forward to adding. So uh, tune needed. in, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, follow that uh, journey and uh, we will catch you on the next episode. See you next time. And now, the end of breaking news. Da-da-da! -da -da.